My guest tonight is a hilarious comedian whose new book, Bulltwit and Whatnot, The Online Ramblings of George Wallace, is available now. Please welcome the master, George Wallace. George, how are you? Oh, my God. I'm talking to Conan O'Brien. Yes, you are. How long have you been doing TV now? 28 years. 28 years, yeah. And this is my first time ever talking to you. That's right. I am so elated. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm finally Conan. You got five minutes. Go. <laughs> <laughs> After 28 years, I get five minutes. You got five minutes. Go. All right. Here listen, we go. Listen you to me. I need to talk. We used to yeah. live in the same building in New York City. That's right. And Paris, you used to say, 28 years ago, you said, come on, do the show. That's been 28 years ago. Yeah. And, uh, I guess you were pissed at me because I lived on the top floor. You lived. You lived had, we, I lived in a, a very a nice building on the west side, and you lived on the top floor, and I lived down down where they put the Irish people down near the bottom. Yeah, but so you had I was very I was very bitter about that. Uh, but yeah, I used to see you all the time. Yeah. And I remembered you'd go on Dave's show all the time, Dave Letterman's show. All, all the time. I used to go on Dave Letterman's show with a pad, and uh, with my you know. Uh, so long ago, with my yellow pad, I could still keep it with me. Uh, Conan, I've been, doing, I've been doing comedy so long, people are accusing me of stealing my own shit. <laughs> <laughs> In 1993, I used to take the, the pad on television. Yeah. I went on Arsenio Hall, and I said, I got some new jokes here that might be funny, might not. I got to do Letterman tomorrow night. I got to make sure this stuff is funny. Wait a minute, so you would try your material out on Arsenio to see if it was good enough to go on Letterman. That must have pissed off Arsenio. Maybe it did. I didn't care. But the, the <laughs> thing about it, hey, Conan, the thing about it, when I would do the joke, I would say, you know, and people accuse me of stealing this, and I did this in 1993. Yep. I would do a joke. The joke would work real good. I'd just write down, joke works real good. I'd do the next joke. Joke works real good. Write, next joke. Needs work. Needs work. i do the next joke. Real good. Fourth joke i do, joke's funny, audience sucks. And they would... <laughs> They would go crazy and just said, that's how I became uh, to be the guy with the yellow pad, the legal pad. Because if you don't put them on a real legal yellow pad, the jokes are not legal. Doesn't, doesn't so, not, it's not legal. I know that. I, you know what my method is? I test the jokes and on every one I say crowd sucked. It's never my fault. It's always crowd sucked. Nothing wrong Never with my fault. You know it's funny. Yeah. You know it's funny. And we have a, <laughs> we're so blessed to be able to do funny business, especially in this day and time. Uh, to be able to um, make the world laugh. And I yeah. just think that's great. And I'm so blessed to do what I do uh, with this epidemic going on. And, and yeah. all I do, you know, I'm just blessed. All I do yeah. is just lie. I yeah. just lie. I got the greatest job in the world. I just make up shit. <laughs> and they pay me. I, that's, you're I right. Love it. It's funny. I never thought about it. Uh, jokes are just, they're pretty much just lies. We're just, we're just bullshitting. We're getting paid. We're very lucky people. How are you during quarantine? What are you doing how are you handling it, first of all? How are you handling the quarantine? Well, let me put it like this. I've been in Atlanta since March 14 when we shut down my show. I was shooting a show with Netflix, and I shut it down. I'm glad because I'm health conscious, and I came to Atlanta. I'm handling it. I'm, I'm locked up. I'm locked down. I'm quarantined. I'm insulated, isolated, whatever. I don't go anywhere. Um, nobody's come to my home. Uh, I don't let anybody in. Um, every now and then, I'll let like Sara Lee and Jimmy Dean and Ben and Jerry. <laughs> ben and Jerry old stuff. friends, Ben and Jerry, uh, Jack stuff Daniels like, can come over. You know, you, you, want, you want the good friends to come over. Yeah, this, I appreciate that's that. That's all I let in here. But uh, yeah, I've been handling it pretty well. But I've, I've changed my living habits. Uh, I'm just too cautious and uh, social distancing. Like uh, not too long ago, my daughter came by to see me. And I live on the 25th floor. And... Uh, and she was in the parking lot across the street. I waved at her ass and I said, hey, as close as you're going to get, social distancing. <laughs> See you. Keep moving. Keep moving. So some things have changed with me, uh, Conan. My, my grooming is not that good. Uh, really? My feet, uh, man, when, I, when I'm able to get a uh, pedicure, I'm going to have to probably stop by Home Depot. And we're talking about sandpaper. We're talking about <laughs> chisel and a jackhammer so. So many, you know, <laughs> You'll need a buzz you, saw. You'll need a buzz saw. You're gonna need. <laughs> so this pandemic has been bad, but I've been. It allows me to 
uh, stay at home and write jokes. I like writing jokes. I can tell you're you, you're loaded for bear. You got a ton of good stuff. And another thing, you mentioned you're in Atlanta. Have you ever been to Atlanta? Yes, I have. Yeah, I did. Uh, I've done some. Sh I've done some shows there, and I absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. It's a beautiful it. place. I was talking to. Uh, I did uh, Trevor Noah last week. Right. And, and I and he's from Africa. And I had him to admit when he got off the airplane in Atlanta, I said, "I bet you never seen that many black people people in your life, have you?" They got more black people in Atlanta. Africans get off their plane in Atlanta and they go, holy shit. <laughs> what the? <laughs> they have, listen to me. When you come to Atlanta, it's, it's amazing. And it's good things are happening in the city. You know, Atlanta is the number one movie making capital in the, wor of the yep. world. Yep. We made that movie and they're making another movie. What is that? Black Panther 2? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when they initially made the Black Panther movie, uh, they they wanted to make it in Africa, and they went over to Africa to make the movie. But when they got to Africa, they found they didn't have enough black people. So <laughs> they had to call Delta and fly them right back to Atlanta. <laughs> so there's a lot of black people when you come here. You just it's just a lot of fun in Atlanta. We make things happen here, and the boating here was great. And uh, I mean, when you think about it, Georgia has played a pivotal role in politics recently. I mean, that's it's got to be neat that you're living there. You're part of history. Georgia blue, baby. Georgia blue. We changed the nation. We uh, it's, it's just been uh, crazy in the last month. You know what Georgia did. Here's the joke I wrote. Now, this is my favorite joke. A black man and a Jew walked into a bar. And the bartender says, may I help you, senators? <laughs> Now, originally that joke was written back in the early 90s, uh -huh. and Clint Eastwood heard the joke. He used it in one of his movies. Now, the original joke I wrote, now, you got to be a comedian to really, you got to know comedy to understand this joke. It was about making a long story short. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this for you. I don't normally talk like this. This was when I was 1993. To make a long story short, two Jews, a Mexican, and a black walked into a bar. The bartender said, y'all get the... <laughs> now, <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. it's just. If you're it's, not in the comedy, I see people sometimes when they they were looking in the audience and people that are in the comedy, they went crazy. You know, that was Johnny Carson's favorite joke. Johnny Carson, that was his favorite joke. I know. I, yes, I, yes. I God, God, I, I, I <laughs> it's make a long story short, and also let's just cut to the chase. <laughs> You know, are you, would you say you're adept at technology? Because I have found in this time of quarantine, you got to be pretty good with computers. You got to be able to get on Zoom. Are you able to do all this stuff? No, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing, a, you know, I love what I do. The new, um, this new age of technical, and I really like TikTok because I do stupid stuff every day. And I just want to, you know, I want to put on, tomorrow I'm going to put on TikTok. Trump going to jail, Trump going to jail, yes he is, yes he is, Trump going to jail. <laughs> and then it's a dance craze. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I shouldn't have said that because I don't, I don't do Trump jokes anymore, so, you know. By the way, we need to have a garage sale, too, because I got all these Trump jokes around here stinking up. Things. I need to get rid of them. You know, That's I've been I mean. happy not talking about him, exactly. I have to say. Um, I know that some comedians say, oh, I'm going to miss doing the Trump jokes, and I think I... I mean, I tried to not talk about him even the last year of his presidency. I just got tired of it. And so I'm enjoying I'm enjoying this time. I think it's going to be a good time for comedy, actually. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I mean, I'm doing right now with the, with the, with the, with the last week what, what has happened in America. The, on the 21st, I felt like a, a, a free slave, you know. Mm -hmm. I, just, I, mean, I felt just great. And then I have, uh, of course, I'm Democrat. I was for Biden. But Biden, uh, I like him, but... I don't like it. I mean, this guy is, I mean, he's doing some great stuff, but it's not good for us comedians. I got no, I got no joke on it. I got no joke on Biden. You know what? That was the same, you know, I remembered us talking about this when Obama was president. He was, he was tough for comedians because he's this uh, <laughs> handsome, smart, uh, you know, uh, competent uh, man who's working hard to make the country a better place. And... Um, you know, where's the joke in that? But I think where's I'll, the joke? I'll, but you know what I'll say? As a patriot, I'll take the competent president over the jokes. And if it means that my business suffers, so be it.
my business does not need to suffer. I'm having problems with Biden. He walks in there yesterday using his four-letter word, plan. Now, when the last time we heard the word plan? <laughs> it's been four years. I mean, that's good with the plan, but it ain't funny. <laughs> that's not funny. He walks in with his COVID team yesterday. Mm -hmm. Doctors, scientists, epidemiologists, uh, infectious disease specialists with a plan. Well, he didn't come in there with family members and some guy push a pillow of mypillow.com guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's good, but it ain't funny. You're right. This is a terrible, terrible time for American comedy. It's and not uh, funny, you know, he's doing that. And, and this guy, look at him, what he's doing uh, to top all of that off, making full, complete sentences. When the last time we heard that? From, <laughs> he's, so Biden, he's, I like him, but it ain't funny. Yeah, ain't yeah, you're right. Funny. We got to get, we got to move him out. Uh, it's, it's not, he hasn't it's, been on a golf course, it's been a whole week. <laughs> you haven't seen <laughs> How are you supposed to run a country and make a country better yeah. without being out on the golf course, you know, freeing your mind? And <laughs> so he's good, but it's not funny. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. You're right. This is a terrible I time. Like it, but it ain't terrible good. time for our country. Hey, let me ask you about your old friend. You are best friends with Jerry Seinfeld. You guys were roommates, I think, for over a decade. You guys were he's, roommates. He's an idiot. Now, now you know I'm his roommate. No, he's an idiot. Talk, huh? He's an idiot, People huh? Yeah, he seems not a smart guy, is he? <laughs> oh, don't you ever say that in front of him, because like Seinfeld, like he's uh, eight years in a row, but one year on Fortune magazine, he was the number one money-making comedian in the world. Mm -hmm. In the world. Kevin Hart beat him out one year. Mm -hmm. And so he think he knows everything. And he's first to tell me, because I'm the one that would tell him, shut up. You have no idea what you're talking about. Everybody else, all the other comedians, yeah, Jerry, yeah, whatever he says, it goes good. I don't take that. I talk to him like a little brother. I tell him to shut up. You don't know everything. You think you know this, you don't know that. He tells me, check the list. Check the list. He's number one on the list. That's all. That's right. his backup. Check the list. He's got too much money. I mean, you and I, we're doing real good. We're doing real good. But yeah. he's, he's, he's up there. It's different. These rich people, man, I go to the house, I mean, just too rich. I go to his house on the island, and the land and the property is so big. I mean, when you punch in the security code at the gate, Waze is still giving you directions to the house. That's how <laughs> Wait. Just to get from the gate to the front door, you need Waze? In 2,000 feet, you will have reached your destination. <laughs> and you get in the house. He doesn't like me to talk about this, how rich they are. And I'm going to catch hell for doing this, but... I'm at his house. I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I went to pee. I, I come back. My bed is made. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a guy saying, a chocolate on my pillow. It's crazy, <laughs> it's crazy but I, I do take advantage of his friendship. And, yeah. Uh, well, you should. You, know, you gotta, should. And, you and you know get... what? He needs you because he's got too many yes people around him telling him he's a genius. He needs you, George. He needs a guy like you telling him, you don't know what you're talking about, and you've got too much money. That's that's what he 45 needs. Forty-five years, forty-five years, best friends for forty-five years. We started a club called Catch Ride and Star in the Comedy Strip in New York City, but we've been best friends for forty-five years. I wish everybody had a friend like Seinfeld, and it's just amazing. Um, and yes, I'm actually the real roommate. I'm actually the real George, and we've been for thirteen years. We were roommates, and uh, I was best man in his wedding, and um, I'm the father of his kids also. So, <laughs> <laughs> We, 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 <laughs> hey, George, we, we, that's been obvious for some time. <laughs> <laughs> when you see the kids, you go, they look a little dark. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I want, to, uh, I want to make sure I mention this, because this is really funny. Bulltwit and whatnot. Bulltwit. You got a and copy? Whatnot. I got a copy. Uh, this is but fantastic. But I did not send you a hard copy. This is the hard copy. I'm more proud of the quality of the book than I am of some of the jokes in there. You know what I do? <laughs> hey, hey, listen, Conan, I'm so stupid. This is the hard copy, right? Uh-huh. When you buy this book, this book is $140. <laughs> and people, I do stupid stuff because I'm stupid. 140, because of 140 characters and, 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 the <laughs> world, and people are buying the book because it's a great table piece. And it's the quality, as you can see, the quality of your paper cover is really good there. Yeah, and you know, I, I like a paperback because uh, I get nervous if the book is, uh, if it's too fancy, I feel like I don't deserve it. So I, I'm, I'm comfortable with the paperback. Well, you myself. don't deserve it. That's why I sent you this one. Go ahead. Yeah, you sent me the paperback. 
Thanks a lot. We used to live in the same building, and I yeah, I get the paperback. Uh, can I read some of these? Because I really like them. I like this one. You can. I'll straight up link with someone from Grinder and grind with someone from LinkedIn. I really don't give a shit. <laughs> How about that? I'll straight up do that. I don't give a shit. You know what? I'll eat cupcakes out of a pan and pancakes out of a cup. I don't play by the rules, okay? I like I'll this one. I like the really silly ones. Just saying, sweater vests are going to have to pick a side when the shit goes down between sweaters and vests. Guess what? They go on and on. There's some really good uh, – I like the, the – the, there's some silly, strange ones. Here's one. I don't play the whack-a-mole game at carnivals because it reminds me of when my family was attacked by moles and I was unable to defend them. <laughs> you know what? That must be a really funny joke because that's also Pat Oswalt's funniest joke. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm just trying to make you pee a little bit from your eye. Uh-huh. <laughs> Instead of just trying to make you pee from your eye. Can I, I say, love- you have an idea – I mean, some of these also are really good. Uh, you know, I started my career as a sketch writer. I had to write sketches long before I had to write jokes. And there's great sketch ideas in here. This is a, a tweet you sent that I think would make a great sketch. I'd like to see this happen. Why do football players only dance when good shit happens? Just once, I want to see a quarterback throw an interception and do a sad interpretive dance. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? No, be, but I mean, that's a funny sketch. I would love to see someone do that. That's a great idea. It really is a great idea. And you know, when you see these tweets that I do in the book, it's not my tweets, it's the replies. Mm-hmm. The replies, and I'm going to write um, more Bull Twit Volume 2 mm-hmm. and whatnot. Like I sh- uh, shout out to the top five bells in the world. So I did Liberty Bell, I did Tinker Bell, I did Saved by the Bell, I did a few more bells. And then somebody hit me with, You never heard of Taco? That drives me crazy, little things like a Taco Bell. Yes. And the next book, I'm going to add some of those replies. Like if I were to do the top five codes in the world. Codes. The top five codes in the world. You see this one coming, don't you? Sure. You got Costco. Yeah. You got uh, 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 co-mingling. You got uh, co-op. And I guess number five would be Conan. Yes. <laughs> How about number one instead of number five? Let's get- Don't push it. Don't push it. Okay. <laughs> Five. <laughs> hey, you, you push it. I, I, you know good. what? You know what, George? I got greedy. Uh, I got I got ahead of myself, and I I apologize. I, I did want to bring up something that's very important, which is um, you got vaccinated, and you feel very strongly about telling people that you got vaccinated and getting the word out that they need to get vaccinated. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, I did that because, you know, uh, black, uh, I did it especially for black people and uh, people of color that's a little skeptical about getting the vaccine, but we need to get this and get it done, especially here in Atlanta. Like I said, we have more black people in Atlanta than anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So I went and got the vaccination and it's just important because we've had a lot of mistrust with the, uh, medical uh, community and the government. Yes. And so that's why it's my job to get out and promote. And, uh, and I got my first shot. And I had no, no reactions whatsoever. I, 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 uh, I got the shot, I sat there for 15 minutes, and I'm good, and I'm ready to get the second one as soon as possible. And uh, if, you, if it's possible, when Johnson & Johnson comes out with the uh, no, only one injection, that's really good to get. Yeah. Now, Johnson & Johnson, the black people should have no problem with that. That's Johnson & Johnson. That's a black company. <laughs> That's one of the great black companies of all That's time. That's one of the great of all time. <laughs> you, heard of, you heard of Black & Decker? Well, one of them was black. Sills and Roebuck. Back in the day, Roebuck was black. You never heard about that. <laughs> George, I gotta say, you are on Johnson and Justin. You are on you are on fire. You uh, you're on fire. Uh, you know, quarantine has not slowed you down uh, one second. I am honored to have you on the show. I'm glad you. you I'm glad you got over your Conan bias uh, and decided to give us a shot. Oh, you still you still gonna get it. You still gonna get it. But you can get this book at georgewallace.com. Yes, georgewallace.net. I yep. didn't go to Amazon because they take half your money. This time I thought, let me make all the money because I be thinking. <laughs> and, all right and, so that's right go to uh you can go to georgewallace.com georgewallace.net it's a really funny book and especially right now in our lives we need to laugh and who better to to, who better to take us there than uh than mr george wallace sir thank you 
And when you stop laughing, you stop living. My name is George Wallace. I love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. <laughs> no, I'm going hey, to get a lawyer and fight this thing. <laughs> hey, Colin, I've always been, I consider you a very good friend of mine, so I always end my shows talking to my very best friends, always like the end, with your punk ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, George, thank you so much, and take care. No, thank you, sir. Let's do it again.